Back in December of 2024, I was driving my Tesla and sure enough got an error that said that the electrical system is unable to support all features of the car. And so I didn't take this seriously enough and got home. Thought it would be okay until I found out that boom, I cannot actually start the car after I had parked it and uh, you know, eating dinner and saw my kids and my wife. So essentially I was dead in the water. I couldn't get into any doors. I couldn't remove the charging cable at all. I couldn't open the trunk at all. It was uh, pretty miserable. So my Tesla essentially died and I'm gonna show you how you can prevent this from happening or at least get by and prevent having to pay for a tow. What I knew about was this little front spot. You push on it and you essentially are then able to get two leads here at the front of the vehicle. And what I tried to do was actually get a nine volt battery to pop the hood with, and sure enough, that does not work. It doesn't do anything. So I wanted to kind of show that to you and then show you what I actually did to get into the car and what I actually did to fix the issue altogether. And uh, obviously I still had to go to the Tesla service center, but I was able to actually not have to get a tow. And so I'll show you the whole process at this point. So I ran to the advanced auto parts or an auto zone and got the NOCO Boost Plus. I'll put a link in the description. I think everyone that has a Tesla should have one of these, which it kind of blew my mind initially that I would need something like this with the Tesla, but it's because obviously the extra battery, the 12 volt battery in the car uh, requires it to function as well, even though you could have a full charge on the big battery. If something is messing up with the 12 volt battery, then obviously you still need to have something like this for jump starting the car. This unit was good for the fact that it was on sale. And on top of that, it would work for other vehicles in case there's you know, a friend of mine or something needs to jump. So as you can see here, I turned on the unit and sure enough, the trunk popped open and that was a great uh, purchase to have that. And I actually had another jump starter, but it was actually in the trunk of this car. So uh, be aware of that. If you have it stored in the car, it's not gonna be great. Uh, so here I'm gonna go ahead and make sure not to lose this little cap and put the leads back on here. Make sure that they um, are secured and snap this back in. And this gave me a little bit of trouble just getting it the right way, but uh, you kind of have to line it up and then ensure that you can actually push properly and securely and it just snaps, should snap back in. And then here we're gonna remove this plastic part of the top of the trunk that kind of makes everything look nice and neat and tries to hide everything under there right next to the windshield wiper fluid. And again, still testing it out, but obviously nothing with that jump helped other than to open up the front. It didn't actually uh, you know, do anything with the vehicle to make it accessible. So now we're going to be going into jumping the actual battery and trying to get a good angle for you was a little bit hard to do, but I think we were able to show you exactly what to do there. And on those two leads of the battery, we're gonna connect it and sometimes it just starts right up that noco will just do it, the trick and start and if that does that then you're in good shape and you'll notice here there's sound in the car i'm able to unlock the door remove the power cord really quickly the charging cable i'm just going to hang it here right next to where i usually leave it off the ground and then i quickly turn off the NOCO, which is not the way to go. So doing this about three times or so, I'm able to tell you that obviously we need to leave that NOCO on for a while. I get a little excited here and I'm 
pretty confident that I'm good to go, but you'll come to find out that the rest of the car hasn't really started up or done anything. There's a possibility that at this point I could probably have restarted the vehicle and done a system restart. And so I'm saving you the headache of, you know, showing you the, all the different jumps. At this point, we're still, you know, not looking good. And at this point, you'll even see, I think, the power seems to disappear in the car. So here I'm showing you that there's a square and a circle when you first connect the Melco, so I wanted to make sure you know how to use it. So you connect it the proper way in there. And the beautiful thing is the unit came charged, which is great, it, it had a charge on it. And so now this is the actual jump that does finally start the vehicle. As you can see, the screen is still dead. So here again, we are connecting it. We're pressing the button there to turn it on. And you can see the front headlights turn on automatically, which is great. And now going back into the car, I'm still at the point where I'm not understanding why it's not starting, why it's not doing anything. I do a couple more tests and then sure enough, I thought to myself, why don't I quickly reset the infotainment system or the computer itself with the two buttons in the steering wheel? And that did the trick. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. I'm disconnecting also anything else that I had plugged into the other, like the cigarette adapter port. And I'm really confused. And then here comes the uh, moment of a good idea. As you can see, I can even press the brakes, which are great. They're lighting up. And there it is finally. I'm going to go ahead and press the two buttons. And then, sure enough, there's the Tesla logo on the screen. Now, as I was driving, what I did notice was there was a loud noise. And the loud noise seemed to possibly be related to the heat. And so as I was thinking more and more about this, I was prepared here, as you can see my fingers right there in the bottom. I wanted to go ahead and actually turn off the heat immediately. And I believe that that's more than likely the culprit and it turned out that it was. So now it's already off, which is amazing. And so now the car does stay on for the rest of the uh, time. And I'm able to then uh, pull the car out of the garage uh, slowly because I had the hood open but I just I was worried that I was still gonna need a tow didn't want it to be left in the garage and have it be a pain to get them to pull it out so and we have a like a side load garage so it wouldn't have been great for a tow truck to try to pull in but I'm looking at all the errors here it's still the same and it's saying the car may not start and so sure enough it looked like you know it's about to start right now which is a great feeling. And mind you, between those different trials of trying to start the car, I actually contacted Tesla and they're like, yeah, just get it towed here. The errors look really bad. They were not expecting that I would be able to start the car and bring it to them. And sure enough, I was actually able to do so, as you'll see here. And so now I'm going in the car and trying to put the car in reverse. About to open up the uh, garage door and roll the vehicle out. This was definitely a good feeling.
And at this point, I am out in the driveway and I'm gonna get out. I did that very slowly, just to make sure that I'm not driving crazy with it open. And then I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that I could get back in if I had to, if there was a problem, there was an issue. I thought for sure maybe there, it may not even move the way I wanted. So I went ahead and now I'm putting everything back together with the plastic molding around there, trying to get everything closed back up. And I'm debating, I'm like, am I gonna close the frunk again now that the car may not start again? And I just took a chance, closed it, and then decided to drive all the way to the Tesla service center. They were really good at the Tesla service center. They allowed me to get in, they gave me a loaner, and then they fixed it by, I believe, the end of the day. And they put in a brand new compressor, and the unit was under warranty. What I'll do is I'll show the actual you know, invoice from Tesla. They also tried to charge me for another battery which they did refund after the fact because they had just replaced the 12 volt battery about a month earlier when I got some alerts that did say I have plenty of time to replace it. And so yeah, obviously this issue wasn't the same thing, but I thought we had plenty of time for that. So I guess we did not. But I hope this video helped you learn how to pop open the frunk if you have no power to the system from the 12 volt battery and then how you can actually jump the car uh, itself to get it uh, moving if you're having issues with something drawing too much power let's say in this case the compressor in your case it could be something else hope this helped please don't forget to like subscribe and turn on notifications thanks